Hey there, and welcome to The Bridge. My name is Armani. And I'm Kelly. Welcome to the second season of You Know What It Is, <laughs> the only television show written by DeKalb students, produced by DeKalb students, and performed by, yeah, DeKalb students. <laughs> I'm from Southwest DeKalb High School. And I'm from Tucker High School. We have a great show for you today. Race is part of everyday life that no one wants to talk about. Well, in our kickback, we're going to sit back and talk about race and racial stereotypes. Yes, and we'll also have performances from Baby Girl. There's a lot more, too, from fashion discussions to hairdos and don'ts. So relax and stay tuned. Welcome back, and now we have performing Baby Girl. And contrary to what their name implies, they're a mm -hmm. rap pop duo who about to kill the stage with Yaz. I've got a sudden sense of urgency to make a move. It took a dream for me to see the light. So many last minute things for me to do. I plan on staying for a little while. So I won't say goodbye, but I'm Turn my dreams into reality So I won't say goodbye But I'ma say see you later Look for me up on the TV screen Third row next to Jay and Beyonce Winning awards cause they loving me I'm going to Hollywood It's your purpose by your actions It's your beauty everlasting It can be love or just to be happy But mine is to get there someday Gotta take flight like a bird fly away Hey, if you make a way, then I'ma stay Then again fly away Forget the sidewalk, I'ma take the main road Gonna make a big man, that's a big load A little bit misunderstood, but it's okay It's all good, cause I know that one day I'ma be in Hollywood See, I'ma make it, take it Never gonna fake it when you hear my name You ain't never gonna mistake it Hey Devin. How's it going? It's going good. I know it's going good for you. After all, the first week on the job is the best one. <laughs> yeah, it's always the easiest. So you got those hooks papers in your uh, computer? You got those hooks papers in your computer. Do you have the hooks papers on your computer? Do you have the hooks papers on your computer? 
So, um, no, I don't think I do. One day in New York City, an insane thunderstorm hit, and Ryan Lawrence was cursed with the power that whenever someone says a question, he must repeat it twice, singing off key with horrible dancing. He is the mimic. Oh gosh, um, do you need any help? Um, yeah, yeah, can you just help me lift it up, please? You just help me lift this up, please. Are you serious? It's slipping. It it's sli I'm really just struggling. Help me lift it up, yeah, lift it up, yeah, lift it up. What's this? Oh my gosh, miss, are you okay? Am I okay? Really? And people call me weird. Okay. joined by Officer Barr, who is a DeKalb County police officer. So, how long have you been a police officer? Uh, I've been in law enforcement now, approximately 14 years. Um, I've been with DeKalb um, of my 14 years. I'm now in my seventh year um, at the East Precinct. And uh, what made you decide to pursue a career in law enforcement? It's funny, um, when I was growing up, I'm from a little town in uh, South Carolina. And um, I've always been fascinated with uh, fast cars, lights, sirens. And so one day, uh, my mother and I were um, out uh, shopping, and um, I saw this police car pull a, uh, a person over, and a lady came, jumped out of the car. And I was like, wow, so the, you know, there are lady police officers. And so it was like at that point, I knew that that was something that um, I wanted to do. And what advice would you give a young lady, like such as myself, that wanted to pursue a career in law enforcement, become a police officer? Uh, definitely, uh, I would say yes to it. Um, when you're when you're choosing a career, um, you want something that's long term. Um, with law enforcement, um, it is a career; it's not just a job. Um, you start out at you know. And the, at, on the lower level, and then you work your way up. So, you know, it's great opportunities for you. Um, it's not necessarily seniority based, and uh, it's a job that you can uh, retire from. So, I would definitely say yes to it. So, um, what's the process for becoming an officer? Like, did you go to college, or was it just police school? Like, what was your journey to that? Um, with me, um, and it's funny because um, I was fortunate enough to grow up with both my parents. And um, my dad always wanted me to be a nurse. And then my mother was saying, no, be a teacher. Um, but basically, they both were saying, you know, get an education, further your education other than high school. Um, you always want to be an independent person. So I would say, you know, definitely with me, um, I did go to college. Uh, started out with nursing, uh, did not work out for me. Uh, so I ended up with my degree in psychology. And um, from there, um, I worked um, while in college. Um, I worked uh, in mortgage, and then I dealt with children a lot. Um, I, I also love children, and so from there, um, I policed in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where I did the. Uh, I worked in the child protection unit of the Broward Sheriff's Office, and I did that for about seven years, and then here I am today with the Cap Police. And um, what are some ways that you encourage like, young people like my age to really grow up to be good citizens? Um, definitely just uh, stay in school. You know, you always hear that, stay in school. Um, you know, uh, if, if you're struggling with something, you know, let someone know, uh, stay out of trouble. Um, and just, you know, just want to be, and I know that, that sometimes in today's society, you know, some people are growing up with, you know, not both their parents, um, and they're in situations where, you know, maybe some type of abuse going on. But again, just know that they don't have to be a product of their environment. Um, just put in your mind what it is that you want to do and, you know, just pursue that. Right. And it seems that um, with my generation, we kind of have like uh, bad feelings towards the police, like they get a kind of bad rap. So mm -hmm. basically, what's something that you want to tell the youth? like about the officers and basically just how we should view you. Right. Um, yeah, you, you, yeah, some, some people do have um, bad, uh, have had bad experiences with police. Um, just know that not all of us um, are the same. And um, if you've ever stopped by police, uh, just cooperate, 
um, whatever you're asked to do, do that. And, um, you know, it, it'll go smoothly for you. Yeah. And uh, just to finish up, um, as a police officer, uh, what's your favorite part of the job? Uh, my favorite part of the job, uh, I, when I started out um, on the road with uh, DeKalb Police, um, I worked as road patrol for six years, and I've currently been doing the public education piece uh, for East Precinct, and I've been doing that for approximately uh, one year now. And so it allows me to, you know, interact with the public, uh, meaning um, I, do, I do community meetings, um, I help set up uh, neighborhood watch programs for communities, because uh, ultimately we do need the citizens' help and, um, you know, help us help them so to speak, their eyes and their ears. Um, and I also go to schools and I talk with students um, in schools. So I would say, you know, right now the best part of the job is, you know, working with, with people um, in the communities. That's great. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Hey, and welcome to our kickback today. Today we have Ms. Holcomb and Mrs. Campbell-Smith, they're gonna join us today talking about stereotypes. So Pit Crew, what are some stereotypes that you've helped to deal with? That all black people listen to rap music? Or that all tall people are basketball players? <laughs> or that all big people like Twinkies? <laughs> um, for me, it's that all black people like watermelon. I hate the smell of it, I'm just saying. That, that all white girls like Starbucks. That all white girls will sue anybody for money. <laughs> Being a metrosexual because I get my nails and feet done. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some ways that we can try and squash out these stereotypes? Well, I think um, if you just see it from everybody's point of view, except for the view that you are choosing to see, like if you try to jump into how like jump into their shoes and how they would see it, then you would just see it in a different way and try to try to listen to the logic before judging somebody. Kind of what she said, whenever people like make fun of my eyes and stuff, I laugh along with them. Like, why well, I feel offended, that's who I am. Those are my eyes, so. No, I just think we all need to respect each other's individuality and instead of bashing people because they look a certain way or they're from a certain ethnic group, we should embrace that, we should support that because we're all beautiful, we're all different, and we're all unique. Yeah, and a lot of things that's been going around in the media, you know, and me being a black male, you know, people see you and they automatically think, oh, he's here to harm me, he's here to do something wrong or bad, but I mean, you know, I could just be innocent and you wouldn't know it because you just look at me and you assume that I'm this cookie cutout of what society makes me. See, it's not necessarily stereotypes that I heard, but I know I've been picked on for the longest about my race because I am multiracial. I'm black, white, and Samoan. So when I would go to a predominantly white school, they would say I'm black, so I can't relate. And then when I go to a mostly black school, they would say I'm too white, I wouldn't understand. But it's like, because I'm multiracial, I understand multiple different things about different races. I understand the history. I can relate to most different histories. So it's like, I don't understand why they think that I can't relate just because I look one way when I'm really the other. And one thing to uh, piggyback off of that is a lot of the times when we stereotype people, when people are stereotyped, is because they're unaware. Mm -hmm. And exposing people and educating them to something that they may not have been exposed to previously is a great way to eliminate that. So what are some ways that we can expose them to these differences to kind of change that negative mindset that they have? One is asking. A lot of the times, just as you shared, um, people uh, have stereotypes based upon maybe what they've learned at home, maybe what they've been exposed to in the media, what they've mm -hmm. read, but asking someone, because a lot of the times it's because we don't know. And if someone is um, uncomfortable to ask, sometimes it's exposing ourselves, exposing our culture, exposing our history, exposing our experiences, because a lot of the times the stereotypes are not specific across all categories, not all genders, not all races, not all religions. So when you have conversation with people and you open yourself up to learning more about them, you realize, wow, what I thought might not be the case. Or, wow, I know something more, we have more things in common, or I can celebrate the things that are different because now I'm more aware. 
And I think a lot of the time people, when there are stereotypes, they react negatively and will try to stereotype back to the person. But I think what we need to do instead is kindly correct them and show them that we're not what people stereotype us as. Like when people like, for example, I love music, I love all types of music. People assume that I may love rap because, you know, or hip hop because I'm black. But I mean, you know, I've just let people scroll down my playlist and just see the looks on their faces to be surprised to see um, Pierce, the sirens, like it's just all different things that makes up a human being. So no one, no one person should be stereotyped just because of the entire race and entire ethnicity. And I think a lot of that comes from people being very closed minded, you know, instead of being open minded, you know, it's okay as a black person to listen to white, Hispanic, Latino music. And our generation doesn't get that. You know, I it's, just think some people, they don't mean to fall into stereotypes or play into them. Like I have a Mexican classmate. People automatically think that he's fluent in Spanish and he eats tacos and burritos for dinner. And I have a Chinese friend and everyone thinks that her family owns a restaurant or that she's fluent in Taekwondo. Like they don't mean it to be hateful. They love them, they care about them, but they just, they don't know a bear from what they've seen in society from movies or the news or TV? Like, I agree because since, I don't know, I guess like the end of elementary school, everybody used to make fun of my voice telling me that I speak like a white girl. And going to a predominantly black school, you're disrespecting yourself saying all black people are speaking ignorant and slang-like. So when you put intelligence on another race instead of your own, then you're just pushing yourself down without even knowing it. That's another thing. People use races as put downs. Like somebody could say like, you're so white and it's this big insult, but it shouldn't be because I mean, if it's this color of your skin and like who you are, then that should be accepted and okay. And that's the same with black. I know how you feel and I actually have a friend who makes a lot of stereotypical comments on like all sorts of races and mainly the white race which I think is kind of rude but yet I think I shouldn't be offended by that. I think it's also like fascinating to think about also how stereotypes can be debilitating towards somebody's personality like because they know all right well people think like all black people like listen to rap music or whatever like I'm gonna prove that wrong like I'm not gonna do that even if Maybe deep down, I really do like listening to like Young Thug or Rich Homie Quan or something like that. Like it's like you're afraid to do these things. Like you don't want to be seen like as a black person holding some fried chicken and watermelon, even though those are some good foods. And it's like <laughs> things like that. Also, like you shy away from things just because you don't want to be seen as this like certain stereotype, and you don't want to prove the stereotype. And, and it's good that you say that because a lot of the times while we're looking at stereotypes of how other people stereotype us or those around us, sometimes we have to look at ourselves to say, what is it that we're doing? What is it that we're thinking about? And opening our mind to be exposed to something greater than because a lot of the times some people who stereotype don't recognize that others are responding or others are receiving their comments or their ideologies as negative because they don't naturally, uh, they're not doing it in a malicious intent. They just believe what they believe. So exposing ourselves and making sure that just as you share it with your playlist, we can kind of open, open our mind so that way when we're engaging with someone else, we can say, wow, the same as I think different of them is different about me. So. Yeah, a lot of times people try to live up to a certain stereotype just because of their race. And like, you shouldn't do that. You should just be who you are. For example, um, all Asians are like smart and like they always like get good grades and stuff. That's not true. We're not genetically smart. It's because we work hard it, because education is a pride in our family. And so we work hard for our grades. We're not just like right out of the bat like smart. And about what you were saying and trying to like live up to your stereotype, you see that a lot too. And I'm just speaking from my own experiences, but just going to a predominantly black school, whereas I may speak like proper like English and things of that sort, I may switch to African American vernacular like AAVE when I'm talking with other classmates because I know that they'll see that as wrong and I need to be able and I want to be able to assimilate and fit into what's going on just so I don't cause problems within like my school setting. And that also goes along with like my school. It's like you're, 
I predominantly went to an all-black school, and the school I go to now is different races and cultures, and I like to ask them, how does your language go, and how do I say this and that, because I want to be able to speak to them that way, and because it's like really cool, and there's nothing wrong with who they are, and they know that, and they like to represent that, and that's why I like different cultures and everything, because it's really cool to me. What you have said is exactly what happened to me. It's like I had moved to Georgia, and when I moved to Georgia, I used to go to a mixed school, like with all different races and stuff. So then I went to a mostly black school. So they took one look at me, and they were like, okay, so she's white. And then they automatically started like making rumors and stuff without asking like, what race are you or anything. So they started making assumptions, and they were like, oh, okay, so she listens to the white girl music. She doesn't like black folks, and she don't know how to be black, because I would walk in with a peace sign on my hoodie and stuff, and you know, my tie-dye pants. So I didn't necessarily fit in. So then as the years went on, because I've been here for four years, so I learned, like, listen, you can't wear this, you can't wear that, you have to say this, you have to say that in order to fit in with certain people. Then with other people, you can do this, you can do that, just don't say it this way. Because then uh, some people may think that you're intelligent, and then other people would think that you're, like, really stupid and ghetto, yeah. And I've noticed, like, more on television, like, even though it's kind of, you know, pop popular that, you know, people see different races and they're starting to integrate it more into shows like you see an example of each person and they try not to make it so you know stereotypical they're starting to branch out more and maybe have you know Asians who like hip-hop or you know black people who may live in the suburbs and not in the hood or in the projects you know like what you would assume and I so. think what you're saying is true like the media does play like a very important role in how people perceive things because a lot of people are pre like open to the media like they watch TV they're on Instagram they're doing whatever so if you see these positive images that aren't really the stereotypes or like the angry black woman or the Asian girl that gets like great grades in class and things like that that really helps to open people's minds and their viewpoints so that they're seeing like okay these people don't just fit in this one box like they're oh they they span across many different things I agree if people took the time to just learn we wouldn't have to assume. I wouldn't have to go anywhere and just assume that this person likes a certain thing. Or if I go anywhere, no one would have to just assume that I do stereotypical things, that I have to do this and I have to do that because I'm black. So how do you keep a positive mindset when you're faced with these racial stereotypes? How do you not be argumentative of confrontational with the other students when they're labeling you or putting you inside of a box? Well, I mean, part of the reason that I can be so positive is because I think personally that our generation is actually a lot more open-minded and stuff and I can kind of see the progression of how things are changing not just with racial stereotypes but with um, all different types of stereotypes and so I just try to keep an open mind and think how you know with each generation we're growing more open-minded and more accepting and we're all just changing. Well unfortunately that's all the time that we have for today. We'd like to thank you guys for coming out and participating in our kickback. And we'll catch you next time on The Bridge. Attention class. All of you guys with no-name papers, you know where they go? Right in there. Yes, ma'am. Clothes in China say made around the corner? Welcome back, guys, to Around the World with your host, Micah. Yes, sure did. Where we try to expose your minds to the world of countries around you. Today is an exciting day for this segment because now we are moving away from good old Georgia to the United States as a whole, comparing and contrasting a few things from the U.S. and another country. Now I have a question for you. What do you think today's country is? China. Uh, well, for the viewers out there, if you guess Canada, then you're right. All right, let's get started. During Canada's fight for their independence from France, the two countries held a series of peace talks until Canada earned their freedom. On the other hand, America fought for their independence. Here, the United States can learn a lesson from our in France. Well, Canada features the longest coastline in the world, stretching 125,570 miles. In Petrolia City, Ontario, it's illegal to whistle to prevent excess noise, while in America, it's illegal to collect rainwater in Utah, Washington, Colorado. Um, okay then. Canada 
China shares the longest border with the United States, the longest border in the world with the United States, pulling up 8,891 kilometers. Uh, can you speak English? 5,525 miles. Oh, okay, that's a lot better. Canada is the world's most educated country. Over half its residents have a college degree. Sounds like they're pretty smart. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, Canada declared war on Japan for the U.S. Did. Now that's a true friend. That's the friends I want to have. <laughs> Canada consumes more macaroni and cheese than any other nation in the world. Um, residents of Churchill, Canada, leave their cars unlocked to offer to stay for Christians who might be who might encounter polar bears, so they can just stay in their car. Oh, they can hug a polar bear. Well, but. Um, the first Canadian casualties to the Afghanistan war were from an American pilot bombing a training exercise. Police departments in Canada give out positive tickets when they see people doing something right. That sounds like that needs to be our police force here. Exactly. <laughs> well, Canada has no weapons of mass destruction since 1984 and has signed trees removing it from their possession. Sounds like America needs to take some of the tips from so if you want to talk to our peaceful friends, Canada's official phone number is 1-800-O-Canada. Dang, I don't got confidence. Well, well, that's all the time we have for today. And I'll see you next time on Around the World. Hi there, beautiful people. My name is Osai, and I go to Salazic Ave High School. And I'm Hannah, and I go to Lakeside High School. And this is... Code Green. Code Green. Today on Code Green, we're going to tell you about sustainable transportation and how it can impact your lifestyle. Most major cities have transportation alternatives available and public transportation for people who, have, who need it. And that is one of those cities. Since we love visuals, Hannah has one for you. So say you're watching Scandal, and right before, Olivia Pope says something absolutely crazy to Melly. A public service announcement interrupts her sentence. Olivia is replaced by some guy in an ill-fitting suit who is ranting about the ozone layer, greenhouse, greenhouse gases, and fossil fuels. Then you hear him beg the general public of America to limit their use of cars and try to use alternative, more environment-friendly forms of transportation in order to save our planet. Then he goes off the screen and scandal goes to commercial. Your mom heard the announcement and insists on a family change to protect the world. So what do you do? First, you have to figure out options and the best way for you to join the cause. So she buys you a uh, longboard and buys you a bus card. Congratulations, you took a big step towards saving our planet Earth. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is a pretty nice visual. This is especially true for heavily populated air metro areas such as Atlanta and the surrounding cities. Do you know that 80% of globally, uh, global warming emission is the US, in the US are produced by transportation? This is not an America exclusive problem, but it's very, very heavy in our nation. The only country that emits more CO2 than America is China. Our cars emit about 300 pounds of carbon dioxide per full tank of gas, and one British car emits about four tons, which is about 8,818 pounds of carbon dioxide per year. Thankfully, our city has equipped us with MARTA, Metro Atlanta Rapid Transportation Authority which is a system that is used by thousands of Atlanta citizens and tourists every day. Cities and tourists are outside of MARTA's reach, create their own forms of transportation to get to the city. These are all types of how Georgia cities and communities are advocating greener transportation. Initiatives in other states have really helped the cause. Bicyclists in Philadelphia ride 260,000 miles daily Saving 47,450 tons of carbon dioxide from being emitted by cars each year. The air quality improvement and reduced greenhouse gas emissions due to bicycling in Wisconsin is worth more than $90 million a year. So now that you have acquired your new knowledge and your new longboard, you are not as reluctant to join the cause as you were before. You've adjusted to your new lifestyle of waking up a little earlier to catch the MARTA bus to school or Riding your longboard, you've learned to record scandal so you would not miss the show, since you'll be getting home a little later now. Your mom is proud and your carbon footprint is increased, decreased considerably. You're loving your new revised lifestyle, and your knowledge that you're helping out your planet is making you extremely proud. Ooh, and scandal's back on, so we have to go, we gotta go. Once again, I'm Hannah. And I'm Osai. 
and this is Code Green. Up next, we have a hot performance performing Go Get It. Please welcome to the stage, Javi. <laughs> Yeah, 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 go get it. Yeah, let it, let it go get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 go get it, go get it. If you talk about the money, go get it, go get it, go get it. I'm like, go get it, go get it, go get it. If you talk about the money, go get it, go get it, go get it. I'm like, 25, 100, let's get it. Go get it, go get it. If you talking about the money, go get it. Go get it, go get it. I'm like 20, 50, 100, go get it. Go get it, go get it. If you talking about the money, go get it. Go get it, go get it. I'm like 20, 50, 100, let's get it. I gotta get that money, gotta get that guap. Can't be my team, well, never ever flop. Never laughing at the hater while we standing at the top. Got everybody tweeting when the album gon' drop. 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 Mess around and got so many sales So many iTunes done stop hey. Thrashing me beat just like hockey, hockey Beat that beat up just like rock, rock Haters they try but can't copy, copy Call me the devil like John got it, got it She left me cause she got it too sloppy, yo She give me best so then call me poppy She do it for the champ, yo, hoppy For me, she a light but to me she a hoppy Going too hard, I can't stop it Got a few rooms but I'm ballin' in the lobby Talk about your life, you ain't bad it, yo Claim your champ, I got it Go get it, go get it Talk about the money, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I'm like 20, 50, 100, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. If you talk about the money, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I'm like 20, 50, 100, let's get it. Go get it. Go get it. If you talk about the money, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I'm like 20, 50, 100, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. If you talk about the money, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I'm like 20, 50, 100, let's get it. Don't scare, little boy, you a scare, little boy. Talk about your life, you want dare, little boy. Scare, little boy, you a scare, little boy. Talk about your life, you want dare, little boy. I'm a true never never little boy. You gon' make me ball hard and I care, little boy. I'ma make you know who I am, little boy. Matter of fact, I think I'm finna go hand, little boy. Go, don't do it. Go, go, don't do it. Listen up, cause I ain't even playing, little boy. I'ma make, make you understand what I'm saying, little boy. I'm a champ like Ali. I'm a champ. Don't nobody go hard at me. Nobody. Can't be that, be the team. Right. And we live in Mobile Dream. Okay. Claim you the champ, bro. Claim it, bro. Better keep working like T Bo. Because there's only one, one champ, bro. One. And I just thought that I'd let you know. Go it's me, bro. Go get it. Go get it. If you talk about the money, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I'm like 20, 50, 100. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. If you talk about the money, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I'm like 20, 50, 100. Let's get it. Go get it. Go get it. If you talk about the money, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I'm like 20, 50, 100. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. If you talk about the money, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. I'm like 20, 50, 100. Let's get it. Go get it. Thank y'all. I appreciate that. What do you mean that's uniform? This is uniform. That can't be a this uniform. Is Look at the money Look signs. This. It's a sweat. Oh, for real? <laughs> oh, well then, right. I'm Mia from Stevenson High. And I'm Armani from Tucker High. And this is Zapranistas. Now today on Dappernistas, we will be giving you a demonstration from models what is appropriate when wearing a uniform. Like if I were to go to a uniform school, I can't be dressed like this. Right, and most likely can't be in money pants. So, starting with our very first male model, Osaya. Ooh. Yeah, he's wearing a blue vest, polo vest, with a bow tie. Okay. With stripes on it, he has white khakis on with Blue sneakers. Now okay. that is definitely appropriate when you're going to school and you still want to be stylish with their uniform. Yeah. So right. for a second model, we have Amelia. She is coming out with a plaid Ooh. high waist skirt. Um, she has on high socks <laughs> and she has on cool shoes. She is rocking it with the jean okay. vest and the white shirt. Right, right. 
Now our very next model, Jared, this is the type of look you want to wear when you want to impress teachers, scholars, having your shirt tucked <laughs> in, okay. yellow, especially if you're in a special type of club, like yeah. speaking of FBLA, he's definitely attire for all A's. He's the type of student that's going to stand out from the crowd. Okay, well this has been Dapper Nisus with Mia and Armani. See you next time. Hey everyone and welcome back. I'm Kelly. And I'm Armani. And on today's Kickback, we'll be talking with the pit crew about hair do's and don'ts. Right, right. Today with us we have Mr. $100 haircut Bobby of Bobby's World. Hair barber to the stars. <laughs> and we also have Atlanta's number one mobile stylist, Drea, in the building. Now, pit crew, what are some of the hottest hairstyles out now in the, of our generation? Of course, twists and braids. Well, yeah, I probably fellas. Think, like the temp fades and the boxes. And yeah, the uh, nappy temp. Yeah, nappy <laughs> temp. <laughs> we call that the Atlanta cut. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Bobby, I have one question. Now, you know, you come to a, every, I'm sure every young man, you know, they come to a week where they don't really have enough money to go to a barber. Yeah. What are some of the things you can do at home that won't, that'll, you know, yeah, make that's, your hair fine? Well, that's funny you ask, because um, I started cutting hair when I was 13 years old. And um, a lot of times you can just, uh, you can buy your own personal clippers or liners from your local beauty supply stores. and. You can actually touch it up after you go, after you um, go to the barber shop once. You can pretty much follow that line that the barber uh, put on there. So it'll save you. It'll save you some money. Save me a lot of money. <laughs> so pit crew, what are some hair do? What are some hair don'ts that you've seen, especially recently? A lot of uh, things that I hear are about how to wash your hair. Is there like a specific way you should? I think that kind of depends on the hair type. Yeah, because people are you like, wanna... oh, you shouldn't wash it every day, or like, you should wash it every day, or like, you shouldn't um, brush it when it's wet and stuff. Yeah. Well, you definitely should, and you don't want to brush your hair when it's wet. But if your hair is oily, you do want to shampoo your hair every day. You want to go with maybe like some clarifying shampoo or something, but it always depends on what you're going through with your hair. So no, you don't want to shampoo every day if you're natural, because it's going to automatically dry your hair out. But you do want to shampoo your hair every day if it's oily. How do you grow your hair longer? Because I've been trying to grow my hair for like the past two years and it barely <laughs> moves. Like it seems every time it starts to get long, somehow it looks shorter like the next day. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> but now look, <laughs> if your hair is not growing though, you want to make sure you keep your ends trimmed. You do want to do that. A lot of people want to get away where they don't want to cut their hair. But if your hair is not growing, you want to trim. You definitely want to trim if your hair is not growing. So they do make your hair grow. If I may also yeah. add into that too, Keeping your ends protected, especially during the winter, will help to retain the length, like doing protective style like twists or faux locks or things like that to keep the, the ends away from rubbing against fabrics and harsh weather and things like that. That'll also help retain the length because they're fragile because that's the oldest part of your hair. Now I got a question for, you know, for the guys in the pit, you know, what type of hairstyles do y'all like on the girls? Bro, you should. <laughs> 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 I think you should go first, Nigel. Oh, well, I mean, I like a girl that, like, wears natural hair, but, you know, it's okay. I understand, you know, they have, like, weaves and wigs sometimes, you know, for a protective style. But, you know, I prefer, like, natural, just embracing, you know, the natural beauty. Yeah. What do you mean by natural? Like, you know, like, I just woke up like this, natural? Like, okay, <laughs> just your natural hair out, just, you know, Anything that just not is you, altered, yeah, not chemically trying altered, to not you. trying to change, not trying to cover, just you. So like real curly, if we have real curly hair, you want us to wear curly hair. Even if okay. you got the naps, embrace the naps. It's okay. <laughs> even if, even if even if you wear even if you're wearing weaves or you know hair pieces or whatever, you know, just it, take it, care it of the good. naps. That's true because you was talking about um, how to make your hair grow. Believe it or not, putting your hair in a weave, like protecting your hair underneath the weave, that makes your hair grow. I need to try that. Yeah. But I, know, oh, I know what you're saying, though. I understand what you're saying, though. I have a question about weaves, though. When I've seen a lot of times with people have their leave out, and because their hair may not necessarily match the hair as well, how do we keep, like, make it so that it looks as good as it did the first day you got it installed? Now, if you're leaving your hair out, it depends on how much hair you're leaving out. But you want to make sure you leave enough hair out to make it blend with your natural weave. That's the only way it's going to look as good as you got it done if you don't leave too much hair out. If you leave too much hair out and you're natural, then it rains. Everybody going to know that's not you. So you don't want to do that. 
All right, now what, what do you all consider um, for females uh, hair don'ts? Because I know if I see you walking down the street and your hair is looking like a pack of Skittles, you know, I'm a, I'm a like, oh snap, her hair is looking like Taste of Rainbow. So what, what, are, what are some do's and don'ts? Well, I mean, you do want to look trendy, but you don't want to color your hair in a color that don't complement your skin. The green is hot now, the purple is hot. Everybody can't wear green, everybody can't wear blue. Right. So just, you gotta go with what works for you. So don't just try to do what everybody else is doing, do what works for you with your yeah. hair. I always, tell, I always tell people to wear what make you feel good. Yeah. You know, if it make you feel good and that's your style, that's your style, you know? Every right. style started from somebody, from somewhere. And know? eventually, uh, yeah. Once you feel it, then it's gonna yeah. fit you. Exactly, because exactly. right. yeah. everybody can't rock your cut. See your cut. Right. Everybody can't yeah. rock that. Thank I'm you. Glad you mentioned like that thing about you know everybody not being a rock the same style. So I just wanted to ask him a question. I'm just curious. So like, what type? Do you change your hairstyle throughout the year? Or is it just like a thing that you do the whole year? Um, well, me personally, you know, when it gets too long, I cut it shorter, and it's just like a cycle of long and short. You know, if I start looking like Justin Bieber. It's not going to cut it, so I get it cut. All right, well, let's say you don't really have the budget to go to the salons a lot. So what's a way that, as a male or a female, to um, be able to keep your hair looking nice and, like, learn how to do it yourself? Actually, YouTube. <laughs> okay, so I haven't been to the salon in a minute. But let me tell you, my house has become a salon. So basically, all I do... I wash it, blow dry that thing real quick. And now if I want to do like little, like the little two buns on the side, like that's kind of hot on Tumblr now, I just do that real, real quick, go a whole week about it. But if I want to flat iron it, like it's not today, um, that will last me, just wrap it every night, that, that will last me a good week too. Like it just, just get, get, get the equipment that you need, like a, the flat iron and the blow dryer and some good conditioner, some good shampoo, you set. Dorian got spin a dime. <laughs> I have a question. Um, for my hair, it's, I don't know what it is. I think it's the texture, but when I try to curl it or like straighten it, it won't last. Like it will not last. Well, they have humidity spray for that. It's always a product that you can use, believe it or not. Uh -huh. So if you feel like it's not staying straight, try use some humidity spray while you're straightening it. And that probably works for it. No, I my hair is really hard to curl because it's super flat and straight. Like, what are some good things to curl it like really well? Same thing. You want to just use. Make sure you use the type of product. The type of product that works with your hair. Your hair is colored, yeah. so you want to make sure that you're using something with moisturizer. Because if it's not holding a curl, it's probably because it's dry. So you want to make sure you put some moisture in your hair. Use a product that's going to like hold the curl. Anything that's going to like um, prevent it from being straight without making it too harsh, I guess. So what are some um, good things that we could use to prevent or treat split ends? Cut it. You got to get your ends trimmed. Yeah, if, you're, if you got split ends, they do have product now that says it's a cuticle sealer. You can use a cuticle sealer, but nine times out of ten, you probably need your ends trimmed. It's always a product, but you can't really just go buy those products because a lot of they just want you to get you to buy the product. Mm -hmm. But you want to just at least try it and make sure it works for you. About, like, hair color? Because, like... As y'all can see, I put hair color in my hair. Is that like a do or a don't? Like, is there like a limit to the hair color and for guys or? No, no, it's, it's not. No, it's not a limit to it. I mean, like I said, if it if you want to rock it, rock it. If it fits you, you feel good about your style, then you rock your style. It's the same. It, it, and it's the same thing I was telling Roscoe Dash when I was cutting Roscoe Dash, and we was doing all these different. I was cutting all these different colors and designs on his head, and he was like, he was kind of feeling like, you know, how the people gonna take it? I was like, look, there's nobody in the industry that's rocking this, this look. This is you, your new artist, his new looks so are rocking, so a lot of the world know him by those looks. That was a great point, and that you should just like have your hair be something that you love and that you're proud of. And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this kickback. You can catch us next time. Stay tuned on the bridge. Bye. Yeah. I spoke to all of your parents. Yeah, that's right. You're all getting kicked out of this. <laughs> Yes. Okay, if a cow walks across the highway, is it called a Milky Way?
Hi, I'm Harlow. And I'm Joy. And today we're talking about the importance of scholarships and applying for them throughout high school and college. Now, some of you may be asking, why Joy? I thought I would be done hunting for scholarship after my senior year. And I'm here to say, no. That's right. There are plenty of scholarships available to college students in case you need a little more money after you graduate, which you will. In fact, applying for scholarships as a college student may seem easier than in high school because not as many college students know that they can still apply, so they've stopped searching. You should definitely take advantage of these while you need some extra money in your pockets. Each scholarship you win reduces the chances of you accepting student loans. By then, you'll most likely have plenty more activities, experiences, and awards to include on your application, which will improve your resume. Right, and you should apply for scholarships inside and outside your school as well. And you can find plenty of national scholarship opportunities with the reduced amount of students applying. Now let's talk to some Cobb County students on scholarships and preparation. Hey guys. Hi. Hey guys, how are you doing? So, um, what do you guys think, what is some advice that you guys can give for other people as far as uh, neglecting to apply for scholarships after high school? Um, I think everybody should at least try to get a scholarship because even though you might not think what you have is good enough for whatever you're applying for, they might think otherwise and give you one anyway. <laughs> yeah, okay. And what are some tips you guys can give to students who are applying to call or to, for scholarships now and later on during and after high school? I would definitely say to get a head start on starting for scholarships mm -hmm. because even if you don't think that you qualify for them, it's very important. You know, the main goal yeah. is to pay as less money as you would yeah. like to right. in college, mm -hmm. so you should definitely get a head start. Me? Yeah. Um, I just think, I mean, in order to get a scholarship in the first place, um, though your academics could be on point, um, you always <laughs> want to try to get into some clubs or at least try a sport because they'll look better on your college application. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, some, another question some students have is, when applying for scholarships, where do I look? What are some advice you guys can give about that? You could look it up on the internet, just like, um, usually, if you want to, like, go to a college at all, if you stay in your state, you could pay less. But even if you do want to get a scholarship, just like look up like the thing you want to major in and minor in, and then um, they, there should be some schools showing up for that. OK, great. Yeah. How about you? And what people don't know is that there's basically a scholarship for every single thing. Yeah. Like yeah. You can just type in and Google you know, a left-handed scholarship or a tall person scholarship, and you will find one. Yeah. So just okay. search in anything. And you definitely find a scholarship of your choice. Okay, okay great. Thanks, guys. Yeah. This has been Harlow and Joy with, with What's the, the Move. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Parenting 101, the segment that informs parents about conflict solutions that they can relate back to their kids. I'm your host, Kelly, and the message for today comes from user I'm a cool dad 543 and it reads, the bridge, it's no secret that communication is key to any relationship. But recently I've noticed that as my children enter high school, they come to see me less and less. Overall, I want to help them learn from my past mistakes so they don't have to go through what I did. But I don't know how to get through to them. How can I better communicate with my teens to keep them from making the same mistakes I did? That's a really great question. Overall, you're gonna find that teens are wanna become more independent and not really wanna to talk to their parents as they're going through these transitions in life. But overall, you need to let them know that you're there and that you care and that you're ready to help them. Also, when it comes from learning from mistakes, the message probably won't be as clear if you're talking about it than if they experience it themselves. So give them a little room to mess up and don't be too hard on them if they do. Hopefully that answered your question. Thanks for watching Parenting 101.
hope that you learned something with us today. We would like to extend a special thank you to all of our guests. We appreciate you all for coming on the show. Now be sure to tune in next time where we'll be kicking out the boys and the girls will take over the bridge. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hashtag it, and share the bridge with all your friends. From everyone here, see you next time. Bye.